the featherweight contest over eight three minute rounds introducing in the uh, red corner we're in the white trunks with the red trim coming from Sunderland his professional record reads 46 contests 24 wins 10 wins by way of KO with 19 losses and three draws and he weighed in at nine stone three and three quarter pound would you please welcome Harry Escott and his opponent across the ring in the blue corner wearing the black trunks with the white trim coming from Coventry his professional record from 10 contests has nine wins four by way of KO with just one loss and he scaled nine stone four pounds ladies and gentlemen Dean Pilly your referee for this contest Mr. Terry O'Connor of Birmingham well, how good is Dean Pithy? Tonight may go some way to giving us a pretty good clue. He's looked the part so far in his professional career, fighting tonight on his 23rd birthday. Dean Pithy from the tough Willen Hall area of Coventry. Former ABA champion. He's won nine out of 10 so far. The other one was a draw against Count McKenzie, but frankly, that was plain robbery. Pithy won it all right. Harry Escott is the man who spends nearly all his time mixing with champions and giving a pretty good of account of himself when he does. Escott from Sunderland in the white trunks. Pithy, the young prospect in black. The man who's trained by former world flyweight champion Charlie Magri. And he's really started off very aggressively, Pithy, in what is his first ever eight-rounder tonight. So in every sense, it's another step up the ladder for him. Isn't this should be something of a test for Pithy because Escott is noted as you know, a, a durable journeyman type fighter who's been in with a, a lot of good fighters and always acquit themselves very well indeed. So this is a, it's a, a big step up in class for Pithy. Pithy putting the punches together quite neatly. The word from the gym is that he's been looking very sharp indeed. like everybody else a week ago tonight he would have seen Paul Ingalls graduation night against Colin McMillan when he became British featherweight champion that's the kind of the slice of action that Pithy is looking for for himself in the not too distant future either so far in his career Glenn Pithy's put the punches together pretty well, combinations, but has looked a comparatively light hitter, we thought. Yes, he's always been busy. He's always had a good attacking style, nice to watch, but just, just lacked that little bit of sharpness in his punch. You know, hopefully he can develop that as he goes along. Good body shot from him there. If he can stop Escott, that certainly would be a significant victory for Pithy. Escott covering up well. He hasn't gone the distance with uh, a lot of good men for nothing. Good right hand counter as well, just to let Pippi know he's still around. I think really that will be the plot from Esco. He'll, he'll try and be cagey, keep the hands nice and tight, and just look for the, the, the sharp counters. Good fast hands from Pippi again, who's taken the eye with his body punching in this first round. another one trying to drive through the middle but I think it really just caught the elbows of Escott to be honest with you coming up towards the end of the first round which Pithy will have won he's done most of the work good body shot again from him there he's certainly a lad who's growing in confidence and coming on no. As you'd expect, the young prospect making most of the running in the opening round. It's due to go eight, this one. Remember, Pippi in the black trunks. It's not a name that would certainly be a, a household name or anything like that yet, but give him a year or so, you never know. 
he is in fact and I'll remind you of it again the last man to beat Prince Nassim Hamed but they were both 15 at the time just a slip from Escott no punch landed Escott has actually only won one of his last seven contests but in that time he's been mixing almost exclusively with British European former world champions that kind of thing pithy has been improving his education by doing some sparring with Colin McMillan in the build-up to that angle fight you saw on Sky last week he's also worked with the British champion at super featherweight PJ Gallagher Pithy doing well, keeping his head on the move, some nice uppercuts going in, and he's working well to the body of Escort. Escort really hasn't found a rhythm quite yet. Escort really is every inch the old pro, isn't he? Little winks to the referee and his opponent here and there, covering up well, looking pretty unruffled by just about anything that happens in there. Yes, he's, he's very experienced. He's been around a long time. I know him personally. He's, we trained in the same gym together many times, and he's, he's, he's always very fit, always in, in great shape, and I think that's why he's, well, he's had a long career. There was a time, of course, when he was regarded as British championship material. Yes, he was, he was right on the verge of a British title fight, and then it just, it just didn't quite happen for him, but he, he's always shown good potential. tended to rather fall back into the trial horse category these days Escott but uh, I think anybody who is a bit short on skills or craft well Escott's going to find them out Pithy of course is absolutely desperate not only to win here but look good doing it yes he really needs to and a, a good stoppage win here would be would be very good for him that would really put his name up there just found it hard in that second round, really, to catch Escott cleanly. <laughs> Three, very much on home territory here. But big support here for Quinn, as you'll hear later when he makes his ring entrance. Third round, live in the ring at Super Featherweight. Dean Pithy with his back to you, now on the left of the picture. The unbeaten birthday boy he's 23 today up against the experienced harry escott and so far two good rounds for pithy landing well with the uppercut and his body punches have been very good indeed so it's good pressure from pithy that was a little better there from escott just using the jam i think that's something that he he should do more often in a fight like this against a, a shorter pithy. Jessica just messing pithy, pithy around a bit inside there. Seeing a lot of the old pros tricks from him, but uh, that'll all be part of the learning experience for pithy. Good body shot from Pithy there. Almost a McGuigan-like left hook into the rib cage. It just looks a little bit tense and over-eager, possibly, Pithy. Yes, at times he may be just trying too hard. This is a, he knows this is an important fight for him, a fight that he really needs to shine. But he's, he's got a nice rhythm and he's coming... He's coming under the punch as well. He's landing well with the right of a cut. Good amateur pedigree, Pithy. Well schooled. That shows. And he's a very tough, determined boy as well who really lives the life. There's no problems with him out of the ring. He travels down from Coventry to London a couple of times a week to do his sparring and occasionally spend some time living with his trainer Charlie Magri they watch videos they work on things 
and they clearly believe they're a camp going places. We'll soon find out. Decent right hand from Pippi then. Well, this has become quite a, a physical fight. Pippi's having to work hard here. So it'll answer a few questions also about his stamina and not having gone past it. Oh, he's got him with a right hand there, Glenn. Down goes Escott. On the floor, he was up at about four, five. And Pippi wants to get the job finished here. And that was a beautiful short little right hand. Well, this is impressive from Pippi. He's starting to put these punches together fairly well. And Escott looks tired as the round ends. Big, big round for Dean Pippi. Well, it came as something of a surprise, the knockdown, towards the end of the round there, and the right hand, I think it was, that did it, the headshot. Yes, he was just rolling in the punches nice. He was, he was landing well. He was connecting with the body, and I think that was probably a plan to bring the hands down, and then it just landed at the, at the right time. He just had Escott leading, waited for the, the lead jab to go back, look for a space, and a beautifully timed right hand. And that was a very impressive shot from Dean Pippi. Now we see it again. He just goes over top of the jab and catches Escott coming in, just doubles up the power with that punch. And Escott goes down. Makes you wonder whether Pippi is just starting to set himself a little bit more for his punches these days. He hadn't actually had anybody on the floor since his second fight. Well, it's, it's impressive putting Escott on the floor. He's just been around, he's a, he's a good fighter, so that, that will do his confidence a world of good now, Pippi. Fourth round, Pippi, remember, in the black trunks winning everything so far and Escott giving out one or two distress signals just dabbing away there at something by the side of his eye that seems to be troubling him not sure what can't see any blood there quite a good repertoire of punches from Pithy as well he's loosened up now yes he's nice and loose but this is a time where Escott's experience, Pithy has to keep the hands up, he hasn't got to get too carried away. Got him again with the right hand, chopping right hand, and Escott is down for the second town. He's up with the count at seven, and the referee waves it off. That's a big stoppage win, that is, for Dean Pithy in round four. Well, let me tell you there that the 23-year-old prospect from Coventry has done what European champion Mady Labtuni couldn't do what Philip Holiday, a current world champion, couldn't do. What Floyd Havard couldn't do. What John Joe Irwin, the former British champion, couldn't do. What Colin McMillan, the former world champion, couldn't do. What Jimmy Breedell, former world champion, couldn't do. And he stopped Harry Escott. Well, that really was a tremendous performance. Again, just a short right hand. He just waits. For Escott coming in, just gets him on the side of the head that time. And his timing was very good because he just waited for Escott to land the punch. So he doubled up the power here. You see Escott leaps in, just catches him on the side of the head. And that's a, a very impressive display from Dean Pippi. Well, they will be absolutely delighted by this. I know Charlie Magri and Dean Pippi, what a birthday present for him. Very good. Yes, he's just starting to mature. He's starting to get that bit of power. And that, that was impressive to do that to Escott, who's been in and, and handled himself with very good fighters. No question, that's the biggest win of his young career. And Harry Escott saying, well done. He's fought them all, Escott. That's a great win. We'll try to get a word with Dean Pithy in just a moment after we've heard from our MC, Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, after 52 seconds of round four, the referee stops the contest. Harry Escott in no position to continue. The winner, Dean Pilly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your appreciations, please. Harry Escott. Well, Dean Pilly can celebrate his 23rd birthday now and uh, well, 23rd birthday, what yeah. a birthday present, Dean. Yeah, like I said, my last fight, you keep me busy, I started to buzz, but I started off a bit slow then, but no, once you call me that right hand over the top, 
I knew I was going to stop him. He's fought all manner of world, European, British champions, and none of them, or very few of them, have stopped him. So how does, what does that mean to you to, to have done it? Like, you know, he's boxed the IBF uh, lightweight champion at the moment, Philip Holiday. He went the distance with Philip Holiday. Like, there's me, I've knocked him out in the fourth. You know, he's boxed European champions, Julian Lawsey, he's fighting for the world title, and none of them have done what I just done to him then. We haven't had you down so far for all your technical skills as a big puncher. Are you starting to set yourself more now? Uh, I'm starting to plant my feet a lot more. I've been working in the gym with the right hand with Charlie. He says, my right hand is, like, the power's there. But just that, you know, my last fight, few fights, because I ain't been fighting regular enough, like, now I'm fighting regular, it's starting to, you know, it's starting to flow. The punches are starting to flow, even though it was a bit of a slow start then.